I just had to make sure that I have my TikTok live scheduled correctly because my morning is looking different, a little bit different than um, it normally does. It's crazy how quickly my hair grew. This is, it's so funny because when, when I start a TikTok live and the people on YouTube will probably be hearing this more than the people who are going to kind of walk into the room, as we say, because uh, TikTok is just notifying it. <laughs> Oftentimes when I start a TikTok live, seeing myself in the screen is like looking in the mirror for the first time in the morning. So that's why I'm like, oh, okay, I have a bit of bedhead. My lips are chapped. Um, I have no makeup on, except maybe if there was leftover makeup that's underneath my eyes. But I'm showing up. I'm showing up, and I'm showing up, and I'm showing up. Because, because this is what I do. Ever, anybody, I know this is a deep cut for some people, but Google Rhett Miller. He's such a cutie patootie. Such a cutie patootie, and I have said it to his face. I don't think I've said cutie patootie. Good morning, Sharon, Shan, Shannon, Shannon in retrograde, and Cupcake, and Matt, and Amy. This is, this is a, what do you call it? I am going to get one of those things um, from Romper Room. You know, I see, I see Emmy, and I see Vernie, and Sunny, and Debbie, and Cupcake, and Heather, and Chris, and all the people in Romper Room land, huh? <laughs> and spreading sunshine, and Babs. I see you. I see you. And we're all in this together, people. All right, excuse me. I gotta, I gotta plug in something here. My plugs keep on unplugging. Ugh. There. Look, you got a sneak. You got a, a behind the scenes of what my my background looks like. And Michelle, good morning. So good morning, everybody. Welcome to Tuesday. Tuesday. I'm trying to do it off the top of my head without looking at the calendar. Tuesday, November twelfth, twenty twenty four. Almighty Father forever and ever. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. <laughs> Those are the songs I don't normally sing, but man, you you go a level deep and I could probably recite the Catholic um, the Catholic Mass circa 1970-something verbatim. Actually, I got a, um, a an email from a friend of mine who I've known since fourth grade, and we, we used to joke about that. So, hey, everybody, good, good early morning to you. Now, um, some of you may know me. My name is Beth. I am a decluttering life coach. Um, and here on TikTok, my coaching and me is called Destination Decluttered. Um, there we go. <laughs> Bring the Catholic harmonizing forever and ever. <laughs> uh, um, it's very funny, too. I will share with you, just because we were I was mentioning that, um, how much... <laughs> So how much my, my memory of what a mass sounds like, sounds like it's being given by John F. Kennedy. It is. Ah, Father, who art in heaven. Ah, Father. Like, there's no ahs. There's no, there's no ours. There's no ahs. Ah, Father. And I can't help but say it that way because I'm from the Boston area. So I am Beth. I'm a decluttering life coach. I am Gen X, as you can tell. I am pretty irreverent, but man, am I here to help you if you're struggling with clutter and you want to also just maybe have your 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 wacky co-pilot, your 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 lovingly helpful Pancho Sancho Panza next to you as you're driving through even the next hour. Okay. There we go. All right. Cat Roby's putting on her Beth blinders. That's what she calls it. So when I show up and do my TikTok lives, a lot of people have chimed in or, or have tuned into them before because I do one almost every day. Um, use this as kind of a Pavlovian response to when Beth is doing a TikTok live, I will go do some decluttering. So if you have the time and you want to do that, go for it. During my TikTok lives, you do not really need to watch the screen to get the benefit of it. Okay, so if you have some e-clutter, um, you know, if you've got some stuff you need to catch up on, this is a wonderful time to do something declutter-wise from what I like to call the surface area clutter. Now, what is surface area clutter? Well, let me put it in context. So I do one-on-one -on -one coaching with people. So I have all these tools and frameworks and processes and methods and systems and whatever the word you want to use to help people kind of get started with their clutter. And I like to chunk it down and break it down to make it easy to get started. Because really, oh my God, you guys, it's so much about after you've stopped getting started again. 
Come on, baby, let's start again. Strangely enough, that's a husband, the song my husband wrote. But um, surface clutter is the top level, kind of like the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. You get the surface level, you get the stored level, and you've got the sentimental level of clutter. Now, the top one is going to be the most superficial. It's going to be the one on the surface, you know, superficial, something you don't have to think a lot about. It's stuff that's on a horizontal surface in your home, or maybe if it's e-clutter, like Kat saying, you know, it's, it's emails you got to go through. It's the stuff that you can declutter and just kind of put away or throw away or donate away without a lot of thought. Now, that's the kind of decluttering that usually works the best when I'm doing a TikTok live. But I know there are two le more levels of clutter. Now, some of you have said, and rightly so, well, I can't put the stuff away. It's, it's on the surface because when I open up my storage, my storage is full. You know, Monk Monk, good morning. Nice to see you. And Christine and Chrissy and Love Junkie 92 and Echo, Echo and the Bunny Man. Um, so, yeah, I get it. So there, this is why all the levels of clutter exist in your house. You could even just look and, and, and I spy with my little eye something that is, you know, clutter that's on a surface. The other funny thing with your eyes is your eyes, actually, this is like having x-ray specs. Remember those things? There was that band from the 80s from the UK, but also those things that they advertised in the back of um, comic books back in the day about put on these glasses and woo, you might be able to see like, you know, a naked lady or something. I like to think that you have x-ray vision because you can look like I can look at the door of that closet, but my brain knows what's inside that closet. And my brain can either go, yay, it's nice and organized and I know what's in there. Or it's like, oh my God, it's a hot mess or it's something in between. So you have x-ray vision. So when you are doing your stored clutter, your stored clutter is the stuff that's behind doors and drawers. I like to make things rhyme. I like to make it easy. Very mindful, very demure. And so if you have stuff in your storage that's making it difficult for you to put away your surface clutter, just notice that. Hey, Maddie and Zeus, nice to see you. All right. Hey, that one persona, cat. That one persona is cheering you on. Go cat, go. Go cat, go. Crazy, man, crazy. You know, I'm a jazz cat, you know. So I show up in your life on TikTok if you've happened to swing by me or my show, my, my show, my, my thing, my page, I guess, to help you think about clutter differently so you feel a little bit different about decluttering. So then you do stuff. Erin! It has become my habit to cheer you with my mug, and I have been using my one big mug over and over again, I guess because the weather's getting a little bit cold. I do hand wash it in between, and I also realized in my wanting to treat my physical body better that this holds about, this must be like a 20-ounce mug, bigger than my other mugs, but I realized that tea has water in it, so I'm drinking 20 ounces of water. How's that? Helping yourself feel better physically, mentally, emotionally, energetically, spiritually, helping yourself feel better on the inside makes you feel better and help do other things on the outside. So I show up with my toolkit. I got a whole bunch of stuff here. I got a whole bunch of tools. I don't know which one to pull out of my toolkit until I hear, you know, What's going on with you? So I love this. Cynthia C. says, my surface clutter has surface clutter in my craft room. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not surprised. And craft rooms tend to be a place of stuff because craft rooms are your creative outlet. So nothing wrong with that. Regardless of the room it's in your house, what I want to offer to everybody is, and Cynthia, of course, because you're the one who started it, is decluttering and decide, deciding to declutter, the decision to declutter gives you the opportunity to take a look at what you have accumulated up until today. And it also gives you the opportunity kind of to stop and say, hey, this is the stuff I have right here. Previously, 
on LA Law. Previously, I, you know, in the past, I said I wanted to keep this stuff. I'm just going to give myself the time to think, do I still want some of this stuff? Okay? So Tickle Me One says, can you give me a starting point? Yes, I will. Now I say start inside. What the hell does that mean? It means calm down your nervous system. Quiet down the backseat driver, the back, you know, the negative self-talk. If you're not feeling good, what can you do right now to make yourself feel better? Start within your skin before you even start to declutter because it's going to make it easier. I'm not just saying that to be all woo-woo and whatever. I'm saying because when you feel better, you're going to do better. Okay? And Tickle Me is asking for a starting point. I already gave you one earlier. I'm happy to... I love repeating myself over and over again because it can hit different ways. You can, first of all, make yourself feel better. Go to the bathroom, put on your shoes, get something to drink, whatever is going to make you feel better than what you do right now. And then... You can start with surface clutter in any room of your house. Or you can start in one room of your house and surface clutter. It doesn't really matter where you start. The where of it doesn't really matter. The part that's important is just that you do start. So start in your, you know, in your um, bathroom today, the smallest room of the house. When you're getting ready today, just get curious about the stuff you have stored there and maybe not even move a damn thing except for your brain waves and your synapses and neurons and stuff. And just look at a shelf or look at a, a little container and say, do I still use all this stuff? And then give yourself the space and the quiet for the answer. Yeah. And I love this. Thank you, Aaron, for chiming in. And Aaron says, and after you feel okay and start, Know that you might not get as far as you want, and that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we do not know. Well, much like life, none of us know how much gas we have left in our tank until we're empty and dead. We don't. It's a mystery. Now, in our real cars, we have a gas gauge that shows us, and now, nowadays they're even more modern, where instead of just saying how much you have left, like I've only got a quarter tank left, the ones will say, that means you've got like 34 miles before you run out. That is a wonderful thing in a real car. We don't know our gas mileage. And our gas mileage, you know how they say your mileage may vary? Your mileage will vary from day to day. So if you are hoping to get from Philly to Pittsburgh, you're going to aim for that and you're going to drive as far as you can, but you may run out of gas before you get there. That's okay. Stop wherever you are. Maybe you stopped in Harrisburg. Now, I'm in Pennsylvania, so this is me. This is how I roll. That is okay. The most important part is that you started and you got further away from it being cluttered and you got closer to it being cluttered. Yeah, yeah, and I love it. Yeah, Aaron, Aaron, so true. Aaron says, it took me a long time to realize decluttering takes more time. Lots of decisions and actions. It does. It does. I never promised you a rose garden. I never want to promise you that it's going to be a quick and easy type of thing. Ba, 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 ba. If it were, you would have done it already. No, but slow and steady wins the race. And this is not a race. This is a journey where you're learning about yourself, about what you saved from the past, why you saved it then, today in the present saying, do I want this now? And when you're thinking about that item from the past in the present, you're also saying, okay, in the future, do I think I want this in my future life? That is a process and processes take time. These things take time. As the Smith said, this is time well spent though. Because when you answer those questions, you learn more about yourself, but you're also then more knowledgeable about what's going to make your house look and feel and function like you want it to. So it is time well spent. Good morning. Oh, Laura Gibbon Voorhees doesn't feel good. Here, giving you a tissue. Here, here, blow your nose. All right, then we're going to throw that away, okay? Do something to make yourself feel better. You're going to notice Laura Gimmon Voorhees on a day like this when you're not feeling good physically. 
your gas mileage is going to be very, you're going to get maybe 20 miles to the gallon versus 40. Move ahead. This is the thing. This is the combo. This is the, the ingredients of moving forward in the day is taking into account the energy you have and the time you have and then comparing it to the tasks, that, the actions you want to take and making it so it feels good that the stuff you want to do is going to be easily doable with the amount of energy and time you have and planning your daily road trip accordingly. Okay? Oh, Lori Hanna, I was thinking about you, hon. I was. Lori Hanna is one of my one-on-one -on -one clients. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching with people. Um, and she says, and I read these, I read these because my TikToks are um, downloaded and uploaded to YouTube and the Comments don't carry over. So that's one of the reasons I do that. I also do that for the people who are walking around doing their surface decluttering, you know. So Lori says, coaching really helped yesterday. Calming down emotions helped me have a productive hour. That's why I'm here, hon. And I will offer to you, and I offer this to everybody, the word down is really helping me. It's kind of funny. Last night, I was in a yoga class, and I realized how many times she used the word up. You know, hands up over the air, up, up, up. And I was thinking down, 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 down. Slowing down, calming down, quieting down. And here's really, the pen is mightier than the sword. The pen is your friend. Getting whatever is in you, out of you, and down on paper. It's like throwing up, but in a good way. Throwing up is a good thing. Nobody wants to do it, but your body knows you will feel better after you throw up. So writing down whatever is coming up, write it down. And that will help you understand what's causing you to steer your car the way you are. So I'm glad to help you, Lori Hanna. You know, and Laura, given Voorhees, Lori's and Laura's, maybe today's decluttering will be using some of my extra Epsom salts for a good soak. Great idea. You saved those Epsom salts for days like this. Use them. It's kind of like... Um, Thanksgiving is coming up in a couple weeks here in the U.S. And a lot of times we save the good stuff for special occasions. I say, as Irma Bombeck once famously said, burn those candles. Use those things. Life is worth using the good stuff now. So think ahead. Are you saving the good stuff for Thanksgiving? And are you going to use it? Do you know where it is? What are your plans? So... I think every day is worth celebrating, but there is something nice and symbolic about bringing out the good plates or using different forks and knives or using a, you know, a, a tablecloth and eating some different foods. Those kind of things are symbolism, but don't wait to use the good stuff. Okay. Do not wait to use the good stuff. Okay. Monk Monk says, I've been working in small chunks. I love it. Chunk it down. And can finally see big progress when I step back and look. Yeah, notice how that can work. If you're working a chunk at a time and a chunk at a time and a chunk at a time and a chunk and a chunk and a chunk, you don't really see the big picture until you step back. So some of this stuff is getting is looking at the big picture and then focusing down and then focusing down and looking, looking back at, at your accomplishment. And you will notice when you chunk down, it will have a positive effect on what your room looks like. If you focus down on one area and then the next area and the next area in one kind of confined space, you will be able to more easily and quickly see the visible difference. You know? No, I love this. Awesome. 014 sauce says, good morning, Beth. So I say good morning to you too. You make my day and inspire me each time I see you. Awesome. You guys, this is why I show up. I show up because I kind of wish back in my day that there was somebody showing up for me saying, you got this, you can do this, I, can, I trust you. If you want that, whatever you want, whatever your destination is, you can do something towards it. Not saying, nope, that's not gonna happen. Minimize your expectations. It has taken me until my 50s, late 40s and early 50s to really get in the groove, like Madonna says, and do this so I wanna help other people because I am really benefiting I personally am benefiting from what I have discovered has helped me. And I, it's just like a recipe. I want to share this recipe for these wicked tasty cookies that are going to change your life. But you're going to have to be the one to make your cookies. I can give you the recipe. I can stand next to you in the kitchen, but I cannot make the cookies for you. 
you have to want to make the cookies. All right? Yeah, you might not be here tomorrow, so use it now. Exactly. Um, Nanya, Nanya Business, that's, a, that's who my family always voted for, Nanya Business. Um, my closet is extremely large. I cleared out 15 bags of clothes and the closet has stayed clean for two months. I love that. But here, I'm going to help you with this because I want everybody to hear this. Notice how we say it stayed clean as if it had anything to do with it. No. You, my dear, you, my dears, you have everything to do with keeping your house or your space, that space, decluttered. I have kept it clean for two months. Take some, some celebration in that. Look what I have done. I have maintained. I will maintain. I think that's like a family thing from my husband's family in Holland, but I digress. I maintained my weight. I maintained a clear kitchen table. I did this. I made this good thing happen. The closet has stayed clean because you did something. You changed your habits of cluttering into habits of not cluttering, and that is the maintenance part of decluttering. So awesome, Nanya, for not only doing the decluttering part, which is taking a quantity of items in your house and decreasing the number, really. I had 15 bags worth of clothes in my closet, and now I don't have those there. But then, even more important, it's like losing weight. I had 20 pounds to lose, I lost 20 pounds. Then in order to keep it that way, you need to do some things, and that's habits. So knowing that, you have done both parts of the process. Rock on. So good. So good. So good. So good. Sweet Caroline. I'm from Boston. I, I'm morally obligated to cheer for the, for the Sox and, um, and Neil Diamond. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Awesome Sauce says, I asked if each cave feeling, each item gave me a feeling of guilt. If so, toss. You guys, seriously, toss the guilt. Toss the guilt. It is a feeling that makes you feel crappy. Don't make yourself feel crappy. Guilt and shame and obligation and fear and resignment and, you know, taking it like, no, no, not on my watch. Not on my watch, okay? Yep, and life is a special occasion to use the good stuff. Life is too short to, to wear uncomfortable clothes, to eat, un, you know, ungood food. Life is too short to feel crappy because we never know what tomorrow will bring. Don't spend your precious energy and your precious time feeling lousy. And if you're used to that, you may not know that there's an opposite to that. And I show up because I didn't know it either, frankly. I listened to the Smiths. I grew up Irish Catholic in the Boston area. I did was not, you know... It was like, oh yeah, that all dreams and stuff, that's what people in California do. Those nuts, fruits and nuts, uh, we are practical. We know that dreams don't come true. So then you stop dreaming. <laughs> How does that feel? Well, that feels sucky, you know, but when you learn to dream and maybe your dream is just to be able to like make cookies on your counter in your kitchen with your kiddos or just yourself. Dream small, dream big, but just dream. Dream big. I have a it's actually think big, dream. I get dream until your dreams come true. Your dreams are what you want in your world. You can make those happen. And if you're freaked out by that, just start small. You know, I dreamt I was somebody in my maiden form bra. Wasn't that an old car, uh, an old commercial? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, life is too short to feel bad. Start feeling good by removing the items in your home that tell you crappy stories. I still have evidence. I don't need a damn stitch of a piece of real stuff in my house to remind me that I was married for a very short, unhappy time in my early 20s. No. But every, you know, but so what did I do? The evidence of that I just got rid of. I will always remember it. I will always know what happened. I don't need souvenirs of that time. Okay. 
So think about Mama D says, you're speaking my language, thank you, you're welcome. This is my language too. His name is my name too. Whenever we go out, the people always shout, there goes John, Jacob, Jim, Kalheimer, da 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 I crack myself up. Thank you, I'll be here all week. Table 19, your pizza is ready. Because I don't like the veal. Try the veal, that used to be my go-to, but I don't like veal. Okay, another thing I did was stay at an Airbnb for the weekend, and I realized I can get by on a lot less. Yeah, notice that when you travel, you you are able to survive with so fewer things than you think you do when you're at your house. Now, it's a little bit different, but it's very, there are a lot of parallels. And even when you are traveling, um, even when you're traveling, the size of your suitcase, what you lug along with you, I am determined that no matter, no matter where I travel, I will always bring a carry-on. As you see, I don't change my, I mean, I change my clothes a lot. I tend to wear the same thing off over and over again. This is my black t-shirt and hoodie era. I don't know when it's going to end, but I'm comfortable in it now. So notice when you go traveling, how nice it feels to not be surrounded by so much stuff. If that feels nice on vacation, why not bring a little bit of that vacation feeling back to your house and remove the, the extraneous stuff, you know? No, user 1622 says, not 1620, like on the on the Plymouth Rock, right? Um, fellow Bostonian, you are so spot on about the lack of encouraging dreams. Yeah, you know, I want to offer this too, though. I'm going to be kind to those people because this is what we do, is we get afraid of dreaming because we get afraid that it won't come true. So we try to cut ourselves off at the knees or the pass. We try to stop ourselves from even trying because we want to be safe. We don't want to be disappointed. There is a story. I will share this random story with you, but it's per pertinent from my own youth. So when I was growing up in the Boston area, I was enamored with the TV show, The Banana Splits. Tra la 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 la. Tra la 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 la. And I remember, actually, I don't remember this, but it's a family story now. So I don't even remember, but there was a thing where they were going to appear live at Channel 56 down. I don't know, I think 56 is in Dorchester or something like that. Now, my mother knew that it was just guys in suits. Me, I'm two, three, four years old. I don't know that, so I want to go see them. Well, my mother didn't want me to feel bad when I discovered that they were guys in suits, so we didn't even go. Now, I'm kind of bummed by that. I would have rather gone, and yeah, maybe it'd be guys in suits, but I get to see... Flegel, Beagle, Drooper, and Snort in real life. My mother was trying to save me pain and keep me safe, but she also, in her desire to keep me safe and not feeling bad, didn't allow me to do something I wanted to do and maybe find it out on my own. So this is what your nervous system does. Your backseat driver who's saying, no, 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 can't, 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 stop, 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 is just trying to keep you safe from disappointment and harm. But they also will then trap you in not feeling the stuff you want to feel. Same thing. And I'm not outing my mother right now. 1982. Prior to that, I was the hugest fan of the, 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 the band The Police. Way back in the day before anybody else. I am an early adopter. They were coming to the Boston Garden. And they, um, the Go-Go's were opening. I still, I had, the, I had the, the, the full page ad from the Boston Phoenix cut out to go see this band. You had to go in back in the day, kids, back in the day, you couldn't just do, do, do. There were no computers. You had to go into the garden to line up to get tickets. Well, I was ready to go. And my mother's like, oh, no, you can't do that. Yeah. And my mom did the best she could at the time. Right. She was dealing with, she wanted to protect me. I get that now. But at the time... It felt At the time, it felt terrible. As I said, 1982, same thing. You can't go to the Boston Garden to go see a band because I went to the Boston Garden once to see a band and somebody threw a cigarette butt off of the, um, off of the, the balcony and it burned a hole in my twin set back in the 50s when I went to see, what was his name? Chuck Berry with a date. So no, those kinds of people, it's not the, you know, it's not the band, it's the fans I worry about. Again, 
trying to keep me safe by telling me no. Yeah. And actually, yeah, the police and the Goo Goo Dolls, the Goo Goo Dolls are a good band. They were about a decade later. These were the Go-Go's, you know. Eat, you know, not eat to the beat. That was Blondie, you know. Um, our lips are sealed. Our lips are sealed. And the Cool Jerk and all that. And Jane Whedon and all them, those ladies. So notice what you do to say, why are you saying no to yourself? Because you're trying to keep yourself safe. Now, the same thing happens. I'm talking about my own personal history with pop culture. The same thing is happening when you go to, you go to get rid of something you don't want. Something's pulling you back and saying, no, you can't do that. You know? Yeah, Ms. Hartman saying, my parents still try to do that to me. So does my mother. But living in fear is no way to live. I would rather go out and try the thing I was afraid to do and fail on my own terms and learn from it or have the possibility that it, 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 it works. But notice the tension when you're pulling back and saying, no, I can't get rid of that. No, I got to hold on to that. No is also then you're creating an, an environment in your life where you're looking around at a bunch of stuff that part of you wants to release and do and say, yes, let go of it. Let it go, let it go. Fear keeps you stuck. And love helps you move in the direction you want to go to. Now, I have learned this. It has taken me too long to learn it, but I feel like I've learned it at the exact right time so that I can help you with this. Decluttering is deciding what you want in your life. And if you don't want something, deciding to let it go and being okay with that. So deciding that what you want is important and that you're going to do something. It doesn't matter if my great aunt wanted me to keep this dish. I don't want that dish. It doesn't mean I don't love my great aunt. She was dealing with her own ideas of what good stuff meant because she grew up poor. She was trying to fit in with the rich kids. We all come from where we come from. When you notice that, you are a product of your environment, of your family, of the time and the planet that you grow up, you can say, whoa, okay, yeah. It isn't just me. It's all this stuff feeds into this. But then saying, wait, stop in the name of love before you break my heart. Stop and say, wait a minute, but what do I want? I want to go see the banana splits. I don't care if they're guys in suits, you know? I want to go see the police. I want to get rid of this thing that I don't like anymore. And I'm going to say yes instead of no. I'm going to say yes to me instead of no. Because I've heard no enough from other, other people and then I've internalized their no's. Their no's. Their no's. I've internalized them saying no. And I'm like, oh, I'll just beat you to it. I'll just tell myself no because you're just going to say it anyway. No. Stop that. Start this. Okay? Now, this is why I am a decluttering life coach. This is why I love to go into, because really the solution, that the, the change is going to happen underneath the hood. It's not going to just be the superficial. And you know this because you have decluttered your surfaces before and it, you may have recluttered them again. You probably have a box of stuff that you inherited from somebody that you don't want because if you wanted it, it would be out on display. But you don't want it, but you're afraid, fear, no, you're afraid to get rid of it. Us too. We're all here. This happens to all of us. It's okay. But when you discover that, when you say, hey, I'm not alone. If other people are going through this too? Okay, cool. So what can I do about it? Calming down the fears and saying, okay, now I get where I am. Where do I want to go? Now, once you've calmed it down and realized, hey, wait a minute, I have some power right here. I have some, I have a say in what happens next with me. So then you say, what's my destination? Now, your destination can be anything. I am destination. I don't want to say destination anything because how you learn how to think like this is by decluttering your home. But it can be destination tap dancing, destination vacation, destination go talk to that cute boy, destination tell your boss you want a raise, 
destination, dot, dot, whatever. Destination, whatever. If that's not Gen X, whatever. Destination, everything. You know? If you truly, yeah, Farm Girl 11, 11 says, if you wanted it, it would be out on display. You would be excited to show it off to yourself because it would bring you joy every time you saw it. God, I love that thing. But when you look at it and you're like, instead of yay, you're like, ugh. That's you saving yourself from feeling ugh more than you have to. So you keep it in a box in the basement. Now, I'm not saying about this all stuff. I've got stuff in the basement that I enjoy. Like I have boxes of souvenirs, but they are small. And I have been, I have gone through the deciding process of do I want to keep this or not? And I feel good about my decision. That's really what it's all about, Charlie Brown. And lo, the angel of the Lord said, fear not, for born on this day. That's what it's all about, Charlie Brown, is you saying, what do I want? And I, for you, want to say, I want to feel better. I want to feel good. And if I'm feeling good right now, how do I maintain it? But if I'm not feeling good right now, what can I do to change it? Now, there are so many ways. There are so many angles. I start with decluttering, but really your nervous system and your physical body feeling good. And then we declutter. We get rid of the stuff you don't want. And you do it at a pace that feels good to you and your energy and your nervous system. So yeah, as Erin said, it takes a while, but it is a journey worth going on because every day you're reinforcing, I am doing something to make myself feel better and make my life better. And this is a fun journey to be on because every day I'm feeling good about what I'm doing. And on the days that I'm not feeling good and I'm not doing stuff, I love myself anyway and give myself grace. Yeah, little black dog, just asking myself what do I want right now feels very revolutionary. It is, because what you want, you can go and make happen. Or die trying. I don't want to be all, but if we're talking about a revolution. What kind of world do you want to live in? Now, if you're freaked out about that, if that overwhelms your nervous system thinking about the world... Let's chunk it down and let's practice that kind of thinking and actions in what kind of kitchen. And I'm not talking about renovating your kitchen and getting more storage. I'm talking about cleaning out the stuff you don't want and realizing you have the power to get rid of things that you don't want in your kitchen. When you realize that, then you go to the living room, then you go to the basement, then you practice this saying, I can do something. I don't want to be surrounded by hate or fear. I want to be surrounded by love and possibility. You know? Yeah, you yourself is the only one that can make yourself happy. That's why there are so many unhappy people out there in the world who own a lot of shit. Because they think it's external. I just need to buy that thing. It's from the skin outside. No. Within the skin, when you are happier inside here, a lot of that external stuff doesn't even matter. Doesn't even matter. Yeah. Status symbols. Showing off to somebody about how much money you made. Look at all the stuff I have. I have a lot of money because look at my fancy purse. I own a boat. Look at the kind of car I'm driving. Did you notice my shoes? Look at me. See how good I am? People who feel good inside don't give a shit about that. No. Now, do I need to clothe my body? Yeah, you don't want to see this naked. I don't want to see this body naked. But do I care about the labels on it? No. I mean, my label actually just realized Palm Springs. This says where I like to go on vacation. You know? And miserable people want to don't know how to make themselves happy. The only way they make themselves happy is to make other people miserable. So let's stop that. Okay, now that one persona, I love this. This is me being your Gen X auntie. It says, insert millennial Lincoln Park link, doesn't even matter. Yeah, I don't know that. But you can change the stuff you don't like. We are practicing within the confines of our own homes and our own skin. We are creating an awesome, quiet, yet powerful revolution by taking back power in our houses and saying, I don't want this stuff anymore. Now, as you quickly notice, if it's just you living there, wicked easy. Except for the fact that you're going to have 
the thoughts and feelings and stories of, of other people in your head, whether they're alive or dead, happens to all of us. You know, fiery angel. Oh, you didn't know I was on till just now? Interesting. Fiery angel, are you on my mailing list? Destinationdeclutter.com slash join. Because I did, just going to look right here, I did put it on the schedule. And that's for anybody, if you want to know when I show up doing my TikTok lives, Tuesday, November 12th, 7 a.m. Okay, check that. Don't rely on, <laughs> I was going to say rely on me. TikTok may not tell you when I'm around. When you're on my mailing list, you know when I'm going to show up. You know how to access that. So if you want to get on my mailing list, destinationdeclutter.com. Okay, see, you need to read your email more, but I will give you, you know the secret place to go that has all that information. And I send very few emails. I do. So if you're unsure of where to look for this thing, I'd look at me being all secretive. Ooh, I'm not going to tell everybody because it's just for the people in the club. But you can be part of the club. In the club, we all fam, right? I'm like two weeks late to that. I just thought of it. If you want to know when I'm doing a TikTok live, go to my website, destinationdeclutter.com. Sign up for the mailing list. If you want me to be your one-on-one -on -one coach, that's also where you find out about that. Okay. Chunking it down, starting small, but just starting is the most revolutionary act. What's the revolutionary costume of the day? What's your revolutionary costume of the day? You know what? I'm going to make myself feel better by taking action to get rid of the stuff on this surface that I don't want anymore. You know, user 616440 says, so grateful you win this community. Yeah, I show up to wave a flag to be like, here's me. This is what I'm doing. These are the people I want to hang out with. If you want to hang out with me, here I am over here. I'm like a, um, like a tour guide. I am a tour guide because I also know, hey, when you hang out with me, this is where we're going. I'm going to take you on a tour. We're going to go on a journey from here to that destination. So here's my flag. I'm, I'm waving a freak flag. I don't know how more freaky I could be. I'm showing up as my illegitimate self, 58 years old, full of pop culture, lack of makeup, increasing wrinkles, heart full of love and hope and desire to make the world better for you and for me and for my nieces and nephew and for all the little people of Stonehenge. This is why I show up on TikTok. I also know what it feels like to be scrolling on TikTok. Scrolling, they be scrolling, they be hating, you know? I'm also a, a scroller like you are. And boy, does it make me feel better when I'm on TikTok or, you know, my other social platforms. But really, and I find people that are encouraging, that are showing up in the feeling of love versus hate and fear, you know? So thank you, Fire Angel. Yeah. Alicia Bencasta Lynn is asking, best way to combat sentimental clutter? First of all, we're not going to combat it at all. Combat rock. That was that, um, that clash thing. We're not going to combat it. We're going to play with it. We're going to be friends with it. We are going to make peace with it. We are going to sit down and look at the stuff and feel the feelings. Yes, we have a lyrical, we are lyrical gangsters, that one persona. You know? So you don't want to combat anything. We are not going to war on anything. We're not going to tackle. If you want to do that, you can go to gym class. You can go join the army. In the Navy, you can sail the seven seas in the Navy. You can, I could sing the whole song, but I'm not going to. Um, we're not going to combat anything. We're going to get comfortable with. We're going to open up the box. We're going to pick out a sentimental item, and we're going to listen to the story it's telling us. And then after we listen to that story, we're going to make a better decision. We're going to come from the information. It's the information society. We're going to come from the information that that story told us. And then we're going to make a decision. After I hear that story, do I want to keep that story or not? If I want to keep that story, do I need this item to keep that story? Does it make it easier for me to remember that story if I have this item? If the answer is yes, okay, I want to keep this item. I've made a decision. I feel good about my decision. The next will be, where do I put it? Now that's another convo, but notice that decision-making. I pull out another item. Oh, uh, you know what this reminds me of? You know what story this thing tells me? This tells me a story of, I feel bad. I don't feel good. I feel bad. This, this thing makes me feel bad. So I can remove this item from my home. 
I don't want that thing that reminds me of the money I paid too much money on something that didn't work out. Makes me feel bad about myself. I'm going to learn about that. Okay. I don't want to keep the thing that was a gift for my ex-husband. No. Except I do have some stuff from that ex thing because we did have some cool things. Whatever. You know, you notice these things. You sit down and you don't combat it at all. You sit with those things and you sit with your feelings and you walk through the process and it will drain you temporarily. But that sentimental clutter, that is the deepest core of clutter, is sentimental. But Allison, I bet you have stuff that is in the other more less deep categories. I bet you have some clutter on the surface and I bet you have some clutter in the middle in the stored clutter that's just like, you know, mugs and sweaters and books and games, candlesticks and things like that. So while I'm talking about your you being drained temporarily, your your you will use your energy to go through your sentimental clutter, please know that you have other clutters that are much lighter and you will get to do so much more of theirs. It's all part of the journey. Okay. Um, Mary is saying, I find it tough to find time. I work 10 hours a day and I'm exhausted when I come home. Okay. I used to run teams. I used to run teams. I used to work with people. I used to be the person in charge of people. I used to work for companies. I will tell you, one of my things would be suggest cut back 10% on what you give at work. Bring back that 10% of energy or ex 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 exerting for them. Bring it on back now. Just bring it on back. Bring it on back. Bring it back to yourself. Now, I say this also as an as a independent person who works for myself. I could work myself into the ground, but I stop. Hammer time. And I say, hey, I'm going to go have some fun. Your job can, can fire you at a moment's notice. They probably won't even notice when you, I'm not saying quiet quitting. If you scale back 10%, 10% of 10 hours a day is an hour a day. Maybe 10 minutes of every hour, five minutes of every hour. Now I feel like the gator. You pull back a little bit. So when you get home, you have something left for yourself. Don't deplete yourself on other people. Be greedy and save some energy for yourself. So when you get home, you're not as exhausted. When you have that energy, you can do something. Okay? Do not exhaust yourself for someone else. It's not giving you the life you want. Now, your boss may be calling bullshit on me. I'm happy to go to bat for you. Because when you feel better at home, you might do better at work. When you're less exhausted, you may wake up a little bit earlier and go to work and be more productive, but then you have boundaries and you say, no, I'm, I'm clocking out now and now is my time. It really is taking back your power and realizing the power you have and how can you use your superpowers. And if you are a good worker, you can do a lot and it may not take the amount of time you have there. If you need to be there at 10, 10 hours a day, you can mark time, trust me. I'm an expert at that. The stuff I needed to get done could get done in a few hours, but I needed to be there for eight. Okay. I pushed it out. You know, just 10%. Yeah. Do not wear yourself out on other people. When you're doing something you enjoy and hanging out with people you love, it should fill you up. We all get drained by something. I get drained. I mean, I had a busy day of coaching yesterday. I did. I had coaching and consultations and it does work, does take something out of you. It does drain your battery. But then you plan accordingly and do things that fill your battery. Now, the funny thing is about my coaching, I'll share with you. My coaching drains me and fills me at the same time. But physically, after sitting and talking for six hours almost straight and not moving my body and not eating something healthy and not being outside and getting some air, I need to stop to take care of my human body so that I can feel better and show up at 6 a.m. for my 6 a.m. client today. So I can feel better and show up at seven o'clock. Now I'm saying all this to remind you to take care of yourself. You would not expect to drive your car forward when the gas tank is empty. Don't try to do that to yourself either. 
okay? Put some gas in your tank. Maybe hanging out with me today has put a tiger in your tank. Maybe you're going to feel better. Maybe you're going to do some different stuff. That's what I hope. I hope that when I show up, I inspire you to do something a little bit different, a little bit different, 10% different than you did yesterday. I woke up this morning and I inspired myself to say, how can I make today a little bit better than it was yesterday for me? And then I look for the little ways I can do it. I can drink a little bit more water. I can get a few more steps in. I can connect with a few more people. I can go out and breathe some air. I can stretch a little bit more than I did yesterday. A little bit, a little bit, one step at a time, one step at a time, one day at a time, Ms. Ann Romano. That's how it starts, one step at a time. But when you're stepping, make sure you're heading in the direction you want to go to. That's where the destination comes in. When you're at work, you're marching towards what they want. They want their destination is profitability, making money, and you're helping them. What are you doing for yourself? And if you're not doing something for yourself, stop it. God, I'm here to help you. Stop not doing something for yourself. Yourself is all you have. After the job is gone, after the people are gone, all you're left with is yourself. When you start to take care of yourself in here, it's not greedy. You will also be able to show up better for other people. Okay? Now, I say this as a life coach, but I also say this decluttering-wise because one of the ways you can help yourself feel better is to create an environment where you're surrounded by not even stuff. You're in an environment that makes you feel better. That will also put gas in your tank. You know when you're out in the world and it's all chaotic and you're like, what the F and I don't even know and it's so traffic and, and people and news and ugh. And then you come into your home and you shut the door on that and it's quiet and you look and you look at something you love and that thing tells you a good story and you sit down on a chair that feels good and it feels good because it's not piled with clothes and you go and you open up the fridge and there's something tasty and nutritious to eat and there's a nice book you can plop down and read. This is what I'm talking about. When you can restore yourself, when you're feeling empty, your home is your refuge. Your, roam, your home is your safe space. Your home should help support you and give you energy to go out into the world and kick its ass. This is why I show up in the decluttering space. Because what you have right now in your home may be dragging you down. Made me making you feel bad when you look at that pile of whatever and you're like, oh God, let's dismantle that pile of whatever. Let's categorize it. Start. Pull stuff apart. What's in this pile? I don't even know. Find out what's in the pile. What's going on? I don't know is a toss away answer. You can say it, but after that, that just uncovers that you're one step closer to the real answer. What's in that pile of randomness? I don't know. Well, let's find out, shall we? Let's go through it together. What you're probably going to find out is that pile of randomness is not so random that there are going to be things that are in the same category. Oh, look, there's a thing I have to do. There's a piece of paper. I have to, I have to call somebody about the dentist. I have to call somebody about the tree guy. I have to call somebody about the dermatologist. I have to get in touch with somebody about this. Okay, action items noted. Oh, Look at this stuff. Oh, these are just clothes that I was wearing a few weeks ago, but now it's cold. These are t-shirts. Okay, these are my summer clothes. I should probably wash them and put them away because it's November in Pennsylvania. Okay. Oh, you know what this is? This is just a receipt of something I bought. Am I going to return that? No. Oh, I can crumple that up and put it in the recycle bin. You know? Notice the categories you have. Now, Christine Gormley, 71, says, Just hopping on yesterday, I decluttered slips. 15 slips. Yeah. It is going to be comical when you start to look at your stuff, when you discover the quantity of certain categories you have. You're cracking up, I assume, at 15 slips. I honestly used to have slips because I used to wear clothes that required a slip because I worked in an office. 
No one wears slips anymore, exactly. Christine, I was going to say, do you still wear slips anymore? I know I don't. I know they used to be in that closet over there. I know for damn sure I don't own a slip. At the time, I needed them. Today, today, you don't need the slips. You needed 15 slips back in the day. Now you don't. So you're saying, back then, this was important to my life. But hey, what about right now? Right now, no. I'm not wearing any slips now, nor do I want to be in the slip-wearing um, era in the future. Yeah, Laura Gibbon Voorhees, no slips for me. So now you can then donate them someplace where people who still have to work in offices where they wear slips can get them. Or punk rock kids can wear them as dresses. Or, you know, somebody can make a, you know, a curtains out of them. Whatever. But you know it's not working for you. Donate the stuff that's not working for you somewhere else where somebody else can pick it up and do something with it. I love the number 15 is coming up. Notice this. You know, Ivy says, after I finished cleaning my nightstand, I have 15 pairs of reading glasses. You know, 15 pairs of reading glasses. Funny thing, Ivy, one of my clients, one of my clients said she was decluttering. She also found she had multiples of reading glasses. And so she brought some to a friend of hers because she had too many. My client had too many. And what did she do? She shared her abundance of glasses with somebody else. So Ivy, if you feel like you don't need 15 pairs of glasses, I know that there are places you can donate them. In my town, there's a little box at the, at the, um, at the pharmacy where you can put them in for the, the Lions Club collects them. I also know that when I went to, actually, this was really cool. When I went to my eye doctor, I brought my old, I said, let me show you, let me walk you down memory lane. Before we've met, here are all these glasses. Do you guys have a place? And there, yeah, we, we recycle them too. So there we go. Yeah, and isn't it funny? Core dress, it, core, core memories unlocked. Wearing a slip. Remember when we had to wear slips and pantyhose, you know? Um, Sandy is saying, I'm going to have a house built. It's just me and my son. How big would you build it? It doesn't matter how I would build it. How, how much room do you want? How much room do you want? I don't want you living in a house that I designed. I want you living in a house that you designed. Ask yourself the question, Sandy. Listen for the answer. One thing I will tell you, and I'm not like a little house person by any means, nor do I live on a prairie, but the more space you have, the more opportunity you have to increase the amount of clutter in your house. When your space is small, it's either easier to keep tidy. You know? Yeah. Laura Gibbon Voorhees says, destination today, inch out of the parking lot. Yeah. Inches, baby. Inches. Inches add up to feet. Feet add up to yards. Yards add up to miles. That's how we move forward in the world. An inch at a time. A foot at a time. A yard at a time. Yard by yard, the world feels hard. Inch by inch, the world's a cinch. I think I read that on some trivet at an Amish gift shop, okay? Shelly Smith is asking, do you know where I can you can do, donate diabetes things? I don't. I don't. But Shelly, I'll tell you why I don't. Because you and I may live in different states, different countries, different towns. What may be a resource to me where I am may not be it for you. However, you know what the both of us have? We have the internet. Google where do I donate things? Ask your friends, ask your community, where can I donate these things? And listen for the answer. There we go. Ask at your doctor's office. You know, onward, says Ellen. See, onward. Cat Robbie got her e-sweep complete. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, I'm going to sign off within 30 seconds because I have coaching and clients and a day that I'm going to make the best of. I encourage you, make the best of today and then... What you did today that worked, do that tomorrow. What didn't work so much today, learn from it. And if you like what you hear from me, show up. I do these TikTok lives pretty much every day, except for when I don't. And if you want to know where they are, yeah, thanks for being here. Thank you for being here. This is a two-way street. If you want to know when I'm going to show up next, get on my mailing list, destinationdeclutter.com slash join, okay? Have a great day, and I'll see you the next time on The Muppet Show, okay?